Now, tonight, also, the Justice Minister is considering a request to reopen a murder investigation. Now, what makes this unusual is the case is 40 years old. One man has already been convicted and then pardoned, and the request comes from his ex-wife, who herself was under suspicion for being involved after the fact. We'll hear from her after we take you back to the, to the sensational events of 40 years ago. 1970, and a murder investigation that would shock the nation. A baby found alive in a blood-stained farmhouse, her parents' bodies discovered days later weighted and dumped in the Waikato River. Neighbour Arthur Allen Thomas arrested and convicted after two trials. You don't give up when you know the man is innocent. Arthur's wife Vivian, who swore he was home with her, is suspected by police as the woman who fed the crew baby, a woman seen by another neighbour. Evidence from a farm labourer working on the farm opposite of the crew property told of a woman, and a passerby mentioned she'd seen a child on the crew property between the dates of the alleged shooting and the discovery of the disappearance. It was a case that attracted huge attention. Then a bombshell when a Royal Commission finds police planted evidence to convict Thomas. We have endorsed um, a recommendation from the Minister of Justice that we should recommend to the Governor-General that he exercise the prerogative of mercy and pardon Arthur Allen Thomas of the conviction of murdering Harvey and Jeanette Crewe. Released, compensated, but it took its toll on Arthur Allen Thomas. And Vivian divorced me while I was still in Paris, and that was the, my hardest, the hardest times. Thomas exonerated, but the mystery remained, who fed the baby before the murder was discovered? Vivian Harrison, if we guarantee to protect that name, can you tell me who the mystery woman is? <sighs> If the evidence was pointing to this person, why didn't the police chase it up? The only reason it would have been because of the evidence that they um, fabricated uh, to convict Arthur. Um, Bruce Roddick, you know, said um, he identified this lady and the police have known all along, right from the word go, who it was. We all like to believe that justice will prevail. Do you still believe that? I think it's possible um, if the woman comes forward and tells what she knows. She's kept silent for 40 years. Yes, I know she has. Um, I, I just hope that because of what's been happening, um, I've written to the uh, Minister of Justice, Simon Power. Um, with, I've sent him my statement and also suggest that he reads the North and South magazine and I have asked him if he will reconsider reopening the case or, you know, take whatever action is necessary to, to address, you know, the issue of who fed Rochelle Crew, uh, because I didn't. Can you understand why someone would remain silent while another person is unjustly accused? No, I can't understand it. Um, well, obviously, she would be um, an accessory to what has happened because she would know... Uh, what went on up there. We're all very familiar here with Arthur's story and the repercussions of what happened 40 years ago. What did it do to your life? Uh, well, it, it messed it up completely, of course. Um, and that was the reason um, I came to live in Australia, um, because I realised, you know, eventually Arthur would get out of prison and I realised that the, you know, the media interest wouldn't have allowed, allowed me to um, lead a normal life. In terms of getting on with your life, you divorced Arthur after the second trial, which gutted him. Well, yes, I, I understand that it did. I've realised later, you know, when I've talked to people, that they thought that because I had divorced him, um, that, that he was guilty. And that, that wasn't the case. And it's never been the case. You couldn't even bring yourself to tell him, could you? No, I couldn't. Um, it... I suppose I didn't want the emotional confrontation at that time. Um, and Pat Booth sort of, you know, paved the way for me. Uh, I guess unless you've been through something like this yourself, um, and I, very few people have been, of course, um, and this was sort of four and a half, five years down the track. Um, yes, it, just something that happened. Had any contact with Arthur since? No, I haven't. You'd rebuilt your life, Vivian. You must have had a certain degree of anonymity. To come out publicly now 
that's a huge step for you. Yes, it, it is a huge step, but you've got to remember that when I left, I was uh, by you know all the police reports, I was the woman that had fed that child. All the records in the legal side of things still shows that, and it's not true. Vivian, it's important then that this isn't forgotten. Very important, yes, that it, it, it can't be forgotten because the case is still unsolved. You've got two, two, two unsolved murders and you have the woman that is available to be interviewed that fed the child. And the authorities seem to, you know, the, the police just seem to be washing their hands of it. They don't want to um, come to grips with it and deal with it. And I don't know why. As I said, Justice Minister Simon Power is considering Vivian Harrison's letter. His office this evening said he will respond to her in due course.